Topic of this presentation is DNA replication. Please watch the video structure of DNA before watching this video to understand DNA replication in a better way. First of all, we will discuss about enzymes which play important role in the process of DNA replication. The most important enzyme is DNA polymerase which catalyzes polymerization of deoxynucleotides on parental DNA template. As this enzyme uses parental DNA strand as template, therefore it is also called DNA dependent DNA polymerase. Here we must explain the meaning of template. DNA polymerase takes clue from sequence of nucleotides present on parental DNA strand to decide sequence of nucleotides of the new DNA strand it is synthesizing on the basis of complementarity rule. So, such a parental DNA strand is called template. Second enzyme is helicase which unwinds the double stranded DNA for replication. It breaks hydrogen bonds between base pairs to form replication foam. And the next enzyme is DNA ligase which joins Okazaki fragments formed on lagging strand during replication. Here we have used some terms like replication fork, Okazaki fragments, lagging strand. You might not know about these terms. We will discuss them in detail in the presentation ahead. Now we will discuss about the rules which are followed during DNA replication. First rule is DNA replication is semi-conservative. We will discuss this point in detail in the presentation ahead. Second rule is DNA replication doesn't start randomly from anywhere on the strand. There are some already defined fixed points on DNA strand from where replication starts and those points are called origin of replication or in short ORI. Third important rule is DNA polymerase shows directional activity and always catalyzes polymerization of nucleotides from 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So, if we know these rules, learning of DNA replication will become very easy. Now, we will discuss semi-conservative DNA replication with the help of this diagram. Here, we have shown a parental DNA duplex and uh, which undergoes unwinding during replication. A new strand is formed on each of these old single parental strands. This means when a DNA duplex doubles during replication, then in both new DNA duplexes, one strand is parental. This is the old parental strand and one strand is the newly synthesized DNA strand. So, we call this type of formation a semi-conservative synthesis in which one old strand is conserved and new strand is synthesized. So, this is the semi-conservative DNA replication. Next, we will learn about replication bubble with the help of this diagram. So far, we have learned that DNA replication does not start randomly from anywhere. There are some fixed unique points on DNA strand called origin of replication from where replication starts. And one DNA strand might have more than one origin of replication as two origin of replication are shown in the diagram. As DNA replication starts from these points only, unwinding of DNA duplex starts from here. When unwinding starts, we can see formation of bubble-like structures at origin of replication. And these structures are called replication bubbles. Now, these bubbles will grow in both directions as shown in the diagram here. And as a result, we will get two DNA duplexes from the single parental DNA duplex. We will now discuss about replication fork. We have seen formation of replication bubble. Now visualize that this bubble breaks into two halves and then turn one half of this replication bubble by 90 degree. 
as a result we now have a structure like this in some books you might see a diagram like this and this is called replication 4 so it's clear that dna unwinding doesn't start from the end point of a dna duplex as it appears when we see diagram of a replication fork in the books it starts from the middle of the duplex somewhere and the replication fork shown in the books is to make the topic easy to understand so far we have learned basics required to understand dna replication now we can understand this process very easily. Here we are showing a DNA replication fork. All points we have discussed till now will be summarized here. Now this diagram shows semi-conservative DNA replication as new strands are formed on the parental DNA strand. But uh, we are seeing some strange thing here that one strand is proceeding in continuous manner in this direction while on the other parental strand DNA fragments are formed in the opposite direction. Why is this happening? Here we want our students to recall two rules we told in the beginning of this presentation. Rule 1. DNA synthesis occurs in 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Rule 2. Anti-parallel orientation. Here meaning of being anti-parallel is that if one strand runs in 5 prime to 3 prime direction then the other strand runs in 3 prime to 5 prime direction see here in this diagram the parental strand is running in 3 prime to 5 prime direction and the new strand is formed in 5 prime to 3 prime direction now this strand is following both the rules we have just told this anti-parallel orientation and uh, polymerization in the direction 5 prime to 3 prime but uh, on the other parental strand which runs from 5 prime to 3 prime direction there is a bit problem because if uh, on this parental strand polymerization occurs from this point in this direction then anti-parallel orientation rule will not be followed so and we will see how this problem is solved during DNA replication. Now visualize the DNA replication bubble unwind, unwinding in small sections and on, on this 5 prime to 3 prime strand DNA polymerase acting in the opposite direction in that unwound section. So in this way many small fragments of polynucleotides are formed on 5 prime to 3 prime parental strand and these fragments are called okazaki fragments so in 3 prime to 5 prime parental strand continuous synthesis occurs forming the leading strand because it is formed in the continuous fashion but on the other parental strand which runs from 5 prime to 3 prime discontinuous synthesis occurs which results in formation of these lagging strands and these are also known as okazaki fragments now dna ligase joins these fragments to form one complete continuous dna strand and here we can see this helicase enzyme which is meant for unwinding the DNA duplex by breaking hydrogen bonds between nitrogenous bases. And uh, we are also seeing these small beads like structures. These are single strand stabilizing proteins. These proteins prevent rewinding of replication bubble as we know that complementary nitrogenous bases have tendency to pair up and this pairing up will stop DNA replication. So this is how DNA replication occurs. We hope this presentation helped you understand this process very well. Here we have summarized differences between leading and lagging strands. 
this differentiation will be very helpful to students who are preparing for a school or board exams as the differentiation is one of the frequently asked questions in exams. Please check your understanding by answering these questions.